The tech industry moves incredibly fast. I mean, skills that were hot just a few years ago are now being automated away. But the positive is entirely new roles are emerging that didn't even exist before. And some current roles are continuing to evolve. I've been really interested in this question lately. Which tech skills will actually matter in the next one to two years? So I dug into the research, looked at market forecasts, and examined technology adoption trends to find out. And I discovered something really interesting. There are specific skills that companies are already investing in heavily today that will naturally become absolutely critical. I mean, even by 2026, which by the way, is less than a year away. How, how is that even possible? I swear it was just January. These aren't just nice to haves, but must haves for staying competitive in the job market. And I'm going to break this down. The 10 most valuable tech skills that you should focus on right now. Obviously, if you're interested in them, whether you're starting out or your career is continuing to grow and evolve, understanding these technologies could be the difference between thriving in tomorrow's job market or getting left behind. Not in a scary way, but understanding these tech that needs to evolve. But before we dive into those 10 critical skills, let's talk about something that matters regardless of which tech skills are in demand. How you actually use and prove those skills in an interview. Because here's something we don't talk about enough. Tech interviews are really hard. I mean, the average software engineer only gets a few shots at their dream companies. And when those interviews come around, you better be ready. But there's always a catch. Preparing for these interviews is complicated. Different companies test different skills in different ways. And most engineers are trying to study while working full-time jobs. I mean, I can remember those exact feelings like you are working two jobs essentially at once. And this is where formation comes in. Two former meta engineers build an AI powered system that creates a completely personalized prep program for experienced software engineers. But it's not just algorithms and practice problems. Formation combines a few different key things. One is adaptive learning technology that evolves with you. Another is unlimited personalized practice. That's something I always need. And a third is technical mentorships in small groups. They also offer one-on-one -on -one mock interviews and company-specific interview preparation. And it works. Formation engineers are landing roles at Meta, Google, Amazon, Nvidia, Stripe, with the average compensation increase, increase I should say, of over $110,000. What makes Formation different is how precisely tailored it is. When you land an interview at Meta or Google, your entire program shifts to prepare you specifically for that company's interview style. They prepare you for everything, data structures and algorithms, system design, behavioral interviews, up to 14 different interview types you might face. Think of Formation as your personal trainer for your engineering career. No fixed timelines, no rigid cohorts, just a custom path to get you where you uniquely want to go. Okay, so I link Formation down in the description, so make sure to go check them out. All right, let's dive into these skills now. Skill one, Gen AI development. Gen AI refers to artificial intelligence systems that can create new content like images, text, music, and code based on data it's been trained on. And I'm sure you're familiar with that. It's a technology powering tools like ChatGPT and MidJourney that's transforming industries. I mean, these are tools we probably use every day. But here's something interesting. Gardner predicts that by 2026, 90% of digital content processes will involve Gen AI, which is wild. For example, AI developers are creating systems that can generate entire marketing campaigns from a single brief. Prompt engineers are optimizing inputs to create photorealistic product renderings that replace traditional photography. And AI ethicists are establishing frameworks to ensure generated content respects copyright and prevents deep fakes. I mean, I'm sure you've seen commercials now that are fully generated by AI, which is wild. Skill number two is advanced cybersecurity and ethical hacking. Cybersecurity is the practice of protecting systems, networks, and programs from digital attacks. While ethical hacking involves authorized attempts to gain unauthorized access in order to find vulnerabilities before malicious hackers or actors, I should say, do, cybercrime is actually expected to cost 10 trillion annually by the end of 2025. So we're really seeing ethical hackers conducting red team exercises that simulate ransomware attacks before they even happen. While cybersecurity analysts are building AI powered threat detection systems that identify day zero vulnerabilities before they can be exploited. Thank you. Thank you for your work. This is a great skill, great skill set to get into. Number three is cloud native application development. Cloud native development is an approach to building applications that are specifically designed to run in cloud environments. 
utilizing containerization, microservices, and auto scaling. But here's the thing, as we all know cloud native apps are essential. Kubernetes developers are creating self-healing microservices that maintain 99.99% uptime and solutions architects are implementing multi-storage cloud strategies that prevent vendor lock-in while optimizing costs. If you are in the cloud, this is where you need to be. Which brings us to skill four. We have to talk about data, big data. Big data really involves engineering, designing, building, and maintaining systems that can process and derive insights from extremely large or complex data sets that exceed traditional database capabilities. So here's something really interesting. The IDC predicts global data will surpass 180 zettabytes, I think I'm saying that right, by the end of 2026, 2025, sorry. Engineers are building real-time processing pipelines that analyze billions of IoT sensor readings per minute, which is really wild when you stop and think about it, per minute. Data is something that's been so in demand, whether it's data analysts, data scientists, for such a long time. And these roles evolving around data are going to change, a structural change, but data itself and understanding it to evolve with it is absolutely key. Okay, coming in at number five, this one, you know, it's you love it or you hate it, I'm not sure why. Well, I do know why, it's because it got a bad rap for a long time being associated with cryptocurrency, not saying crypto is good or bad, I'm not getting into that discussion, but blockchain technology itself, which is actually supposed to add 3 trillion in business by 2030. So we're looking a little bit further than 2026. Now developers are creating smart contracts that automatically execute insurance payouts when verified conditions are met or building decentralized finance platforms that provide banking services without traditional intermediaries. It's a really great industry to get into. There's so much potential in use cases. Speaking of potential in use cases, let's talk about edge computing. This is something that I find really fascinating because it's something that we see a lot of nowadays, but maybe we don't realize is edge computing. So what exactly is edge computing? Let's start there. Edge computing moves processing power closer to where data is generated, AKA the edge of the network, rather than in centralized cloud data centers, which really reduces latency and bandwidth use. This is interesting. Gardner predicts that 75% of data processing will occur at the edge by 2026. So edge computing specialists are designing systems for autonomous vehicles that process data locally to make split second driving decisions. IoT developers are creating smart factory equipment that detects quality issues in real time. And system architects, that's another great example, are building edge networks that keep critical systems running even when cloud connectivity is lost, which is a pretty cool use case I've never really thought of. Let's jump into number seven, immersive technology, AR and VR. I love AR and VR and it really goes beyond you know, what we typically think with playing in headsets or virtual reality, it can, you can really blend both approaches, which is mixed reality. But here's an interesting fact. The AR and VR market is expected to reach 114 billion by 2027. So AR, AR developers are creating surgical assistance applications that, for example, can overlay a scan during procedures, or VR designers are building immersive training environments for emergency responders that simulate dangerous scenarios safely. And mixed reality specialists are developing collaborative workspaces where remote teams can interact with 3D models as if they were in the same room, which is, once again, just wild to wrap your head around. Speaking of wild to wrap your head around, you're, we're getting into it with the next one, which is quantum algorithms development. Stay with me here. Quantum algorithms utilize the principles of quantum mechanics in computing using quantum bits, qubits, that can exist in multiple states simultaneously. So I always like to give the example of if a light switch is on and off at the same time. It's really hard to wrap your head around because it feels impossible. But the quantum computing industry could generate 700 billion in value by 2035. Quantum software engineers are developing algorithms that optimize logistics routes in ways that classical computers could not, I don't wanna say never, but can't achieve. Researchers are creating quantum simulations that model molecular interactions for drug discovery at such a quick rate. And quantum security specialists are designing post-quantum cryptography to protect data from future quantum attacks. I mean, 
Quantum and encryption is a, is a tough conversation to have in, in hand. Next up is skill nine, which is DevSecOps. DevSecOps integrates security practices throughout the software development cycle rather than a separate phase, which really combines development, security, and operations, just as it sounds, into a seamless process. So this is, was a really interesting report from GitLab. They reported DevSecOps team deploy software 200 times faster, significantly with fewer, no, sorry, 200 times faster with significantly fewer security issues. That's pretty wild when you think about it. 200 times faster. It makes sense though when you think about these teams combined and what that process really looks like. I mean, we're very familiar with DevOps, of course, but then we bring DevSecOps into the mix with the security portion of it. It really makes it that much more powerful. This is a skill set or a field even, if you will, that if you are interested in really evolving and growing your career into is, is so in demand right now. And the last one, which is I think so important, is sustainability and green technology. I remember when I was working at a company, uh, it was a big tech company, and someone I was working with was very passionate about green tech. And I thought, what is this? I, I don't understand what you're talking about. This was quite a few years ago. And then now today, you see, you see sustainability and green tech pretty much everywhere you look. Companies are investing millions and millions into this industry or upskilling their developers or product managers designers, everyone on the team, about what green tech really looks like. Because first of all, if they can get the funding for green tech, it's always a good thing. It's always a good look, you know, if we want to talk about the marketing strategy, but then for the, what should be the heart of the strategy, the real strategy is green tech can make such a big difference. Things that I remember her sharing things like if you just turn off your computer before you go home or ways that you can factor code now even with AI to make it more green and sustainable so it's not running as many systems. These are all really important things to think about and if you are a developer or more on the technical side, this is a great niche area that you can really, if you're working on a company, really take initiative and show that you know you want to be a leader in this area. All right, we went through the top 10 skills that are going to remain in demand or can grow in demand, I should say, come 2026 and beyond, which it's, I can't believe it's gonna be so soon already here. I hope you enjoyed this video, felt inspired by it, learned something new, even if you're not interested in say any of these skills, being aware of what is out there and what others' roles are is so key. All right, and also make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as a reminder, I linked formation down below, so make sure to go check them out. And leave in the comments other questions you have, other video topics you have, and that is what I will make the next video on. All right, or maybe I'll do a poll. Okay, I'll leave number one to four video options down below. Vote on which one you wanna see next. Thanks, everyone.